A basic philosophy in photography is you don't take pictures of people, you make pictures with people. I have a vague idea of what I want to shoot, but whatever happens in real life is usually much better than anything I can come up with. Reality is much more interesting and intricate. You get to share with a bigger audience the beauty of this sport and the beauty of what people can do on the water. If you look around at freedivers, we all have this thing where it kind of goes against the norm to hold your breath, you know? Most people like breathing. The main difference between me as a cameraman, as a freediving cameraman, and a freediving competitor, because I've done competitions as well, and when you compete, you try to forget all that's around you. The outside world pretty much doesn't exist. It's just you and the sea. But obviously, for me as a freediving cameraman, all there is is the outside world. It's the complete opposite. I'm not focusing on being as relaxed as I possibly can. I probably haven't taken as big a breath as I possibly can. So I think what I can do as a cameraman is about 60% of what I can do as an athlete. Ideally, I don't want to go much deeper than 30. And because I'm a little bit lazy, around 10 or 15 meters is where I usually have my office. That's usually deep enough where it seems really deep, but it's actually not that deep for me to, to get to. And I can do that all day long. But if it needs to be 25, then I go to 25. If it needs to be 30, then I'm having a, a heavy day. The standard camera goes into quite an extraordinary housing. And those housings can survive sometimes 120 meters, like deeper than I can get. I prefer wide angle lenses because water itself is a bit like a lens, right? It's already 30% uh, more zoom on there. And I also like to capture that immensity of the sea and the relative smallness of the athlete. So the camera has a big dome in the front. It's rounded like this because I'm shooting with a wide angle lens. So if you put something circular in front of it, you see the circle. So it has to be rounded like that. Then in the middle bit, that's where the lens lives. This is where the housing, the camera itself goes. All these buttons allow you to control every function on the camera itself. And then in the back, you can see a little green light there that indicates that it's um, completely vacuum. There's a little valve here that allows you to suck the camera vacuum that ensures that the camera is completely sealed. As soon as you lose vacuum, you know that there's a leak and you can bring it up so it doesn't drown. The camera is about six and a half kilos. In the water, it's a little bit less than that, of course, because water is buoyant, but it's still negatively buoyant. So I'd say it's about 500 grams, something like that in the water. That's why I have the cable, because in case I let it go, it doesn't fall all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Underwater photography is a little bit the opposite of, say, something like studio photography. Like in a studio, you control everything. Underwater, you have almost no control. Like everything is moving, the light keeps changing. My models are usually free divers and they're going for a dive, so I can't really tell them, like face the camera or anything. So I have to work around them. So it's a bit of an uncertainty of like, did I get the shot? But there's the loveliness of like, stuff can happen spontaneously. I think the hardest part of my job is something I, I make hard myself. If an event has say, 40 or 50 athletes, I want to cover them all, which means I got to get them on the way down. And I swim back up and breathe as hard as I can. And I swim back down again to catch them on the way up again. So for every athlete, I dive twice, which means that on, like, on a long day, you make 70, 80 dives. That's one day and then the next day you have to do it again. <laughs> That's physically extremely demanding. It is a tricky element to work in. It's extremely rewarding, but extremely difficult. But the best part is, every once in a while, I still feel that I get lucky when I, when I get a good shot. And part of it is luck, because you know the light cooperates and the athlete just happens to be in the right position. But you get to share with a bigger audience what you find one of the most beautiful things in the world. Like to me, this is ballet. This is 
like Michael Jordan playing basketball. It's a gorgeous sport and you get to show that to other people. I love that.